Germany is facing a drastic number of refugees by the end of 2015, believed to be in the region of 1.5 million. It is not quite on a biblical scale, but an exodus it certainly is. Migrants who've been trapped at the railway station in Budapest now deciding to walk the hundreds of miles to Germany and what they see as the promised land. The other side of this tragedy is how it will change Europe. Non-Western migrants had already been flooding into Europe for decades. Leaders refused to stop it. We are afraid. We are in danger every day, every minute. They're coming inside. Police. They want to kill each other. And we have to, you have to, someone has to protect us. They are in our house. We are the victims. We are not there. We have to live last before. We have to live our life. They took it for us. We're not in war. They are. We have to take them from here. This city is no place for people like them. what that means inside France right now and what the counter-terrorism, counter your counter-terrorism counterparts in France would be doing. Well, certainly it's the highest possible state of alert inside France right now. What, what's happening in France, but it's also happening in the United Kingdom and certainly here in the United States, is that the counter-terrorism communities in each of those countries are talking to each other right now, scouring their databases for any indication of, of threats or warning that would give some indication of who was responsible for this and making sure that that information is being shared immediately with the, the French counterterrorism officials and law enforcement so that those individuals who may still be at large are able to be apprehended, if at all possible. And it would trigger higher states of alert here as well. We've already learned the stadiums in St. Louis on a higher state of alert, the Rose Bowl, big football game there tomorrow on a higher state of alert as well. What else will be happening here in the United States to protect the homeland? Well, as you know, so major cities we demand our right to stay here. We are here to stay. No matter what you do. Your democracy is empty box. It is for you. Because you are a racist. How can it be? We are not going to fear of you. Because we are more than stronger, more than yesterday. And we will be tomorrow more stronger. And we defeat you. Ordinary German men and women stood here and applauding them. Extraordinary. People handing them water. Welcome to Germany. How do you feel? Of that, of that transformation which must take place. Europe is not going to be the monolithic uh, uh, societies that they once were in the last century. Jews are going to be at the center of that. It's a huge transformation for Europe to make. They are now going into a multicultural mode and Jews will be resented because of our leading role. But without that leading role and without that transformation, Europe will not survive.
I want to welcome you to Prophecy Update, brothers and sisters. I've been away for a while, and I'm glad to be back with you here the day after Thanksgiving. I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving day. Uh, Brother Bridges is not with us this week. He's gone this week. Our Prophecy Update begins right now. As you looked at the clip, you can see that this world is in total chaos. We want to have a word of prayer as we look at things that are taking place in our world that's going to affect us directly. Let us pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, we come before thy righteous and holy throne, and we just pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts here at this session of the Prophecy Update and direct us and teach us and show us and help us, Lord, to develop that violent connection with you, for certainly the time is at hand. Thank you all for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, saints, it's been a while since I've been with you. I've been out on the road, and as I said this weekend, um, Brother Bridges is out on the road, but we're going to continue uh, with our prophecy update. A lot of things is happening in this world today. Or uh, as you saw from the intro, the clip, we are this world is in total chaos. I want to go to our Bibles. First of all, we want to go to Romans chapter 13, verses 11. Romans chapter 13, verses 11. And let's look at a very familiar text. Romans 13, verses 11. I, again... Pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and pray that you didn't eat too much. Uh, Romans 13, verses 11. The Bible says, Romans 13, verses 11, as we look at prophecy update. Revelation 13, I mean, Romans 13, verses 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time, to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. And as we look at the screen here, we see that the clock is ticking, saints. The clock is ticking. Time is running out. And we just want to look at a few things that's taking place in our world today as it relates to prophecy. First of all, we want to go, we want to go over to uh, Isaiah. We're studying tonight, saints. We are studying tonight. It is time for us to study the Word of God. There's a lot of things happening. We want to get our, we want to get our feet on solid, solid footing. Solid, solid footing. Let's go to Isaiah. And let's go to Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, we want to look at verses 9. Isaiah 42, verses 9, as we'll entertaining the things that's taking place in this world today as it relates to prophecy. The Bible says in Isaiah 42, verses 9, as we set a foundation for our study tonight, the Bible says, Isaiah 42, verse 9 says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. The Bible is simply telling us that we must look at history in order to understand where we are right now. And we're going to look at that tonight. First of all, I want to look at just uh, add on to what we just saw in our, in our in intro. Here he is a refugee crisis. A refugee crisis is, is serious, saints. It's very serious, but it has some prophetic significance. I want us to understand that this has some prophetic significance. You know, every time something happens, we, you know, people say, well, this is, this is a fulfillment prophecy. But this really does have some prophetic significance as we're going to see as we go on. So here is the refugee crisis, as you saw on the, in, in, on, on the intro. Here's another picture. It, the crisis is really a serious crisis, a very serious crisis. It has some very serious impl uh, uh, implications. Another picture. It just shows you how, how desperate these people are, very desperate pe people, very desperate. This is a refugee crisis. They're coming from, from Syria and, 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 and the uh, Far East in every, every kind of way. They're just trying to get, get, trying to get 
trying to get free of what's taking place there in Syria and Iran and what have you, uh, the African countries and what have you. Then we have the Russian Passionate Plan that was bombed. Now I want you to follow this now. We've got a refugee crisis, and then we have the Russian Passionate Plan that was bombed out of the sky. A couple hundred people lost their lives with that. This is chaos in the world, chaos. Here's another picture of the, of the, of the uh, plane that's just lying there, destroyed. Let's go a little bit further, saints. Here is the Paris attack. All of us are, are, are aware and familiar with the Paris attacks, and it's fearful what's, what's taking place. I mean, it's, people are afraid. Uh, uh, they, 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 I mean, Brussels is locked down now because of uh, the fear of, of another terrorist attack. Uh, Germany, uh, England, Paris again, you know, they are fearful, brothers and sisters. This is a Paris attack. The, 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 the police, people crying and over their loved ones, 129 people lost their lives. And here's the president of Paris. He said, listen, we are at war. He says, these people have declared war upon us. He says, we are at war. Let's go, saints. Let's go. Another Russian plane down, Turkey shot a Russian plane out of the sky because they said they came into their airspace. Now, Russia, as a result of their, plan, their passion plane being, being bombed out of the sky, they, they joined into the coalition to attack a section of ISIS, not all of ISIS, but just a section of ISIS. But they went into a Turkey, uh, Turkey territory, airspace, what have you, and the Turks blew their airplane out of the sky. I want you just, I want you just notice what's taking place here as we look at this prophecy update now. Notice what's taking place. ISIS is behind all of the problems that we just looked at. We see a refugee crisis. We see the Paris attacks. We see a Russian plane being bombed out of the sky. And then we see Russia joining in the coalition and getting their plane shot out of the sky. Now look what, as you looked at the, the, the clip, listen, this is what these people are saying. This is what these people are saying. They're saying, we will rule the world. We will rule the world. That's what ISIS is saying. As you looked at the clip, uh, that's the full clip they're saying that we are producing babies. So where you produce two babies, we produce 22 babies. And it says we are going to take over this entire world. And really and truly, brothers and sisters, many Bible reading, uh, Christians are now looking at ISIS and the Islamic world as a threat and as a, and it's, actually, it's actually beginning to affect our theology. We begin to see, well, let's go back to the Bible and see what does the Bible say. I'll tell you, saints, what we're going to look at tonight in, in, this, in this section, we're going to see what does the Bible say concerning ISIS. We're going to see what does the Bible say. This is Prophecy Update. We're going to see what does the Bible say about ISIS. Let me go uh, to Ephesians. We're going to the book of Ephesians, and we want to look at a very familiar text. We're all uh, familiar with this text. We're in Ephesians. We want to look at chapter 6, and we want to look at verses 10 as we are now studying. We are, this is a study tonight. Prophecy update tonight is a study. We want to look at verses 10. We want to look at verses 11 and verses 12. Verses 10, 11, and 12. And let's see. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It goes on to say, verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 says, Listen at verse 12, saints. We must look at the Bible. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're not wrestling against man. We are wrestling against the devil. 
And if you've looked at the crisis that's taking place in our world today, I want you to remember, brothers and sisters, that there's only two powers in this world. Matter of fact, let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. We want to study tonight in our prophecy update. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Let's look at verses 16. Romans chapter 6, verses 16. As you hold your hand in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verses 16. Let's see what does the Bible say. Romans 6, verses 16. Are we there, saints? The Bible says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. There's only two powers in this earth. That is the power of God and the power of the devil. There's only two forces here. And if, if, if God is not doing it, then Satan is doing it. And so when the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of the spiritual wickedness in high places, it is telling us we need to look deeper than ISIS. We need to look deeper. We need to look to the source of what, all, what, what, what is going on, what is actually taking place here. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Very familiar text, saints. We are studying tonight in our, in our prophecy update. We want, to, we want to look at what's taking place in this world and see what, how does prophecy fit into all of this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. What does it say, saints? The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So here we, here's the first shot. See, here's the beginning of this, 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 this dispute in heaven. The Michael fought against the dragon, the dragon here representing Satan. And then the Bible goes on to say, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, the Bible identifies the devil in four personalities as the dragon, as it, that is a persecuting power. Remember that for later on. As a dragon, Satan is a persecuting power. Then it says that old serpent. As a serpent, we find in Genesis that he is a deceiver. As the devil... We see this in, in Matthew chapter 4. He is a tempter. And as Satan, he is our adversary. So here we see the four personalities of the devil. First, as a persecuting power. In heaven, the Bible says that the dragon was cast out. There he was persecuting. He was fighting. As the serpent, he is a deceiver. As the devil, he is a tempter. He tempted Jesus. But as Satan, he is our adversary. Now, the Bible goes on to say, and I heard a loud voice. He was cast out first. And he says, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of, of, of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused him before God day and night. That's a lot in that text right there, but we don't have time to, to deal with that. Let's continue. The Bible goes on to say, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their, of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Verse 12 says, verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Now brothers and sisters, when Jesus died on the cross in 31 A.D., Satan was kicked out of heaven for good. And it's at this time that Satan recognized that he had but a short time. And the Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. Verse 13 says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Now we want to go down to verses 17, because this is very important in light of what's taking place in our world today. The Bible says in verse 17, and the dragon was wrought with the woman. Not the serpent, not the devil, but the dragon was wrought with the woman, meaning he's in, in, is persecuting the woman. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, saints, I said earlier, we want to see 
if the Bible says anything about ISIS, and I know, of course, it wouldn't be with that name ISIS, but does the Bible say anything about ISIS ruling the world? They, remember what they said? They said, we will rule the world. And many, and I'm sad to say, among Seventh-day Adventists, we're now beginning to look at this, this group of people, this vicious, heathen group of people that's killing people. I mean, it's, it's fun to them to kill people. We begin to look at these people, and we begin to try to go back to the Bible and find somewhere in the Bible where these people are going to rule the world. They say, we will rule the world. And there is 1.6 billion of them. I've been, let's say this. I've listened to the news reading thing. There's 1.6 billion of them. That's so they, they are the, 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 the biggest block group of people in the world right now. 1.6 billion. And so many are beginning to go back now and try to actually make them be the king of the north of, of Daniel 1140 and what have you. We're talking about prophecy update, brothers and sisters. We're talking about prophecy update. And so what we want to do here this evening in our prophecy update, we want to go back in history since the Bible says, Romans, I mean, in, in, in Isaiah 42, 9, that behold, the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So have the Bible told us about this taking place right now? So the prophet says, history. The prophet herself says, behold, the former things, or the Bible says, behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you them. Now the prophet says, we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. And so the prophet is simply chiming in in what Isaiah 42 9 says. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Now, it has been historically uh, said that the Islamic faith is actually a descendant of Ishmael. And the Bible says that the, the Ishmaelites would, and now you go online, they'll, they'll try to deny that, but the, you, but the Bible says the, 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 the Ishmaelites people would be a people that uh, would be as the sand of the sea. Tons of them. And it says they would be wild men. They would be wild men. So now the Bible says, I tell you before it come to pass, but when it come to pass, you might believe. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you. So the Bible says this. Let's go. Now let's see what else does the prophecy. Let's see what else does the prophecy. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. She goes on. She says, the history which the great I am has marked out in his word, uniting link after link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to eternity in the future tells us where we are today in the possession of the ages and what may be expected in the time to come. All that prophecy has foretold has come to pass until the present time has been traced on the pages of history and we may be assured that all which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its order. Pay attention to this, saints. Pay attention to this as we look at as we dwell into our prophecy update for this Friday evening. The prophetic chain reveals found events. So we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Remember this. God has laid this thing out and we are to walk, follow it through. What has he said is going to take place? All right, let's go. Another statement. Tracing the footsteps of prophecy on the pages of history. We are to trace the footsteps of prophecy on the pages of history. She says, there is a study of history that is not to be condemned. Sacred history was one of the studies in the schools of the prophets. In the record of his dealing with the nations were traced the footsteps of Jehovah. So today we are to consider the dealings of God with the nations of the earth. Listen to this, saints. So today we are to consider the dealings of God with the nations of the earth. Do you think that if what's taking place now, God didn't already know what's going to take place? Do you, do you think that? God already knew all, all that's going on right now. He already knew it was going to take place. 
we are, again, we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecies to study the workings of providence in the great reformatory movements and to understand the progress of events in the marshaling of the in the marshaling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. A seven day Adventist, brothers and sisters. We have got to be students of prophecy. Matter of fact, we're told that we have been called individually to be students of prophecy. And we're not to allow things that are taking place around us to, di to, to divert us from the standards in which we already know. But we are to look at these things and see how do they fit into what God has already told us was going to take place. And so to, 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 to stick our head in the sand and say what's taking place with ISIS and what have you and all this murder and what have you, uh, no, we shouldn't even pay attention. Oh, no, we shouldn't even pay attention to it, but we need to look and see where does it fit in the overall scheme of the prophecy of Genesis 3, 15 and Revelation 22, 4. God says, when, when man sinned, he says, I'm going to have a people that, that, that's, that's going to have victory over sin. They should be able to see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. That's the, that's the whole issue. There's a war going on, brothers and sisters. And we need to see what is Satan's plan, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we're wrestling against the devil himself. We need to see what is his plan in order to keep God from from fulfilling the plan of salvation. So how does ISIS fill in, fit into all of this? Where is all of this going? What is the found, what is the, what is the found even? What is, what, where, what does all this mean? Let's, let's go. Let's see if we can find out what, what, what does this mean. Let's look at some history now. Let's look at America. Let's look at some history. 1492. Follow me, saints. Follow me, saints. 1492. You know that uh, we are told that Columbus discovered America. Now, I, I, I'll, I've always taken issue with that. <laughs> uh, the Indians met him on the shore, so how could he discover America? But, we, you know, that's just an, that's another story altogether. <laughs> we, won't even, we won't go there. But we're just going to accept the historian's uh, thing. 1492, uh, Columbus discovered America. He comes, he finds America, and he, but the Indians met him on the shore. So he really didn't discover America. It was already here. The Indians was already here, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. So 1492, Columbus discovers America. He discovers this, this land. And then when you go and look at their history, this was a rich land. With, I mean, just, just rich, un, un, untainted. 1620, I want you to follow me, saints, because we, you say, well, what does this have to do with ISIS? And what does this have to do with all the crisis, the Syrian crisis? What does this have to do with all that? We're looking at prophecy update. Let's see what does it have to do. 1620, now let's go back. I want you to follow the dates. 1492, Columbus lands here. All right, 100 and some years later, the Pilgrims get here. And I wish I had time in this prophecy update to, 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 to go through and explain what took place historically that the Pilgrims came here. But it was from cause of persecution. Let me just say that much. They left England because of the Church of England. They went to Holland, and it's from Holland that they came here. So, but we don't have time in this, in this segment to get into all those details because there's some rich details there. But they came to America. They landed here in 1620. Here are, and they were Christians now. That they were Christians, brothers and sisters. And here, a couple of pictures here that's depicting them landing here and, and praising the Lord for being able to come to this land so they would be able to worship without restrictions and without persecution. That was the purpose that they came here, brothers and sisters. Now, God knew, knew all about this. I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Let's go. All right. Then we have the first Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving, saints. We just had Thanksgiving. As I said, I hope you didn't overindulge. I hope you didn't eat too much, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. It was the first Thanksgiving as a result of them coming here. They were thanking the Lord for this beautiful land and this freedom to worship God as their conscience uh, directed them. All right, let's go, saints. Just 16 years after the Pilgrims landed, Harvard University was accepted. Harvard University is the oldest institution 
of higher education in the United States, established in 1636 by a vote of the great and general court of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. It was named after the college's first benefactor, the young minister John Harvard of Charlestown. I wish we had time to really get into this because this has some serious stuff behind the scenes there as well, but we must move forward. All right, so I want, I'm, I'm 1492, 1620, now 1636. We're moving, but we're looking at history. Now, here we go. No taxation without representation. No Sugar Act, no tea, no tea Act, no Stamp Act. This took place 1750 to 1760. There were uh, conservatives here, and they were beginning to rebel against the motherland, which was England at this time. They were beginning to rebel, and they said there were, there were no colonists in the British Parliament which led to cries of no taxation without representation. And so, uh, you know, we ended up with 13 colonists. This was, this was America at the time, 13 colonists. And as res, res, the, 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 the motherland, which was England, was taxing us on them, on various uh, commodities, sugar, tea, the stamp acting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the colonies didn't have anyone in Parliament in England to represent them, in other words, to look after their, their, their uh, uh, end of the bargain. So it began to be a, a, a protest. No taxation without representation. And look at the date again. We fought, we've gone through history, brothers and sisters. You said, Brother Mason, what does this have to do with ISIS? What does this have to do with the crisis? Hold on. We have, this is prophecy update. Prophecy update. I hope you have your Bibles out. I hope you're studying. 1750 to 1760s, they began to protest. All right, let's go. Then, March the 5th, 1770, look at the date now, let's, let's keep our dates, 1750 to 1760. All right, let's go. The Boston Massacre was a street fight that occurred on March 5th, 1770, between a patriotic mob throwing snowballs, stones, and sticks and a squad of British soldiers. So here was a patriotic mob. They call them a mob, patriotic people. In other words, they were angry at the British soldiers because the British soldiers represented England and England was taxing them. And in other words, they were saying they were unfair to them. And so this mob was throwing snowballs, stones, and sticks. And a squad of British soldiers Several colonists were killed, and this led to a campaign by speechwriters to rouse the ire of the citizens. So, in other words, what happened, saints, they began, the citizens they began to write and rouse the people up to rebel against England as a result of this massacre, because the soldiers shot into the crowd and they killed several of the, the colonists. And so this, the, 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 the agitation is, is, is getting worse and worse, getting worse and worse. All right, and look at the date. This is March 5th, 1770. We are moving forward. Let's go. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Let's go. All right, this is 1770. All right, let's look at the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party, initially referred to by John Adams as the destruction of the tea in Boston, was a political protest by the Sons of Liberty in Boston on December the 16th, 1773, as we are moving forward. This is the Boston Tea Party. All right. Now, this is so much history here, Saints. I remember when I was in school, I didn't like history. I love history now because history, you ought to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Let's go. Now, April 18, 1775. Let's back up. This is 1773. Now, this is April 18, 1775. Who is this man? This is Paul Revere. As he rides, and it's a long story here too, brothers and sisters. He's riding, what is he saying? The British are coming. The British are coming. In other words, the motherland now has said, listen, enough is enough. We're going over, we're going to shut these colonists down. We're going to put them in their place. And so, and, and so, but here the colonists were saying, listen, we're tired, we're tired. You know, they, we, this is unfair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they had decided, hey, look, we, we're, gonna, we, we're not going to take this any longer. So the, 
the British army is coming now to put down this rebellion here in, in this far-flung colony of theirs. You know, at one time, the, the sun did not set on the British Empire. It was everywhere. So in this far-flung country here. So Paul Revere's writing. He's telling all the citizens, like, the British are coming, the British are coming. Prepare the war. That's what this is about, things. All right. At this time, this is still not America as of yet. All right, let's go. This is a British colony at this time. July the 4th, 1776. Are you with me, brother? So let me back it up. Make sure you got this. Here's April the 18th, 1775. July the 4th, 1776. We all know about that, don't we? 4th of July. We declared our independence, July the 4th, 1776. In other words, this far-flung colony, 13 colonies that had been developed at this time, and we declared our independence from the motherland, which was England. Watch this now, saints. All right, let's go. This is July the 4th, 1776. George Washington crossing the Delaware River the night of December 25th to 26th, 1776. In other words, this is July the 4th, 1776. And now the, 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 the England soldiers, the British soldiers are here, and the, uh, the, the battles are going on. And so on the night of December 25th to 26th, this is Christmas, 1776, George Washington crosses the Delaware. This is a daring uh, expedition that he takes on and surprises the uh, General Cromwell and defeats him at the Battle of New York. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? We are looking at prophecy. This is prophecy update tonight. Prophecy update. We are studying the word. Matter of fact, we're going to have quite a few of these like this because we need to know, brothers and sisters. All right. This is the night of December 25th, 26th. George Washington crossing the Delaware with his soldiers and what have you. Surprises Cromwell and defeats him. He has, Cromwell have to surrender to him. All right. Let's go. December 25th, 26th, 1776. Let's go a little bit further. Now, a seven-year war ensues from 1776 to 1783, a seven-year war. That's prophetic. Then we have the Treaty of Paris of 1783. Now, get the point. 1776 starts the war. 1783, the war is ended, and they have the Treaty of Paris. This is 1783, where uh, the British and the colonists now are uh, signed a treaty to end the war. Are you with me saying so? We follow this now, prophetically, time-wise. 1783, the Treaty of Paris. All right, let's go. September 17, 1887, we have the signing of the Constitution. September 17, 1887, we have the signing of the Constitution. Now, I, want to, I just want to refresh your memory. ISIS, who is causing such chaos in this world right now, is saying that they will rule the world. And I'll be honest with you, the way it looks, the way they're going at it, I mean, they are infiltrating America. Uh, I mean, our schools are now beginning to yield to support Allah and the Islamic faith. And there's mosques coming up everywhere, and in in, in, in in all the other countries, in Germany, in England, in France. I mean, it's everywhere, and it's 1.6 billion of them. And and and, and their you know their religion says they are to take over the world. That's what they believe, and they are having babies, 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 and they're they're growing exponentially. And so it looks like I mean I mean if you don't know prophecy, you say they, they hey look. They must be in here somewhere. This, this must going to happen some kind of way. So, September 17, 1887, we have the signing of the Constitution. All right, let's go. I hope you're following me. I hope you're following me. All right. Then, 1791, we have the Bill of Rights. 1791. I want you to remember these dates. 1776, 1787. 1791. Let me say it again. 1776, 1787, 
1791. All right. We want to look at number one in the Bill of Rights. Number one. I'm going to blow it up. Number one. Let's blow it up. Number one. Article number one. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Let's underline that. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. What does this mean? Are prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or are abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. I want to look at this. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. What does this mean? What this means, thinks, is that this Bill of Rights, this number, article number one, means that this country would not have an official uh, denominational religion. I think that's the best way I can say it. In other words, there would be no state religion in which everybody had to adhere to. Like, because see, what, what, what they left was a state religion. The Catholics ruled the world at one time. And you had to be a Catholic, and you, you were persecuted if you weren't a Catholic. When, the, when, the, when the, the Church of England broke away from the Catholic Church and accepted it, you, you, you had to adhere to the Church of England. And so what the pioneers of this, uh, the, the, the forefathers here said, we, we'll have no uh, uh, official religion. You can be whatever you want to be here. You'll be free to worship. Now, it, it, it took time to get that because, you know, we had the Puritans who was persecuting people here just like they, they did over there. But it took a while to get that. But so they finally... When they got there, this is what they said. We have no official religion. You can, be, you, can, you can be a Baptist. You can be a Presbyterian. You can be a Methodist. I don't know if they had them back then, but you can be all of the, whatever you want to do, you go worship as you please. Now, I'll say something. I will say something here now. When the signers of the Constitution, when the Bill of Rights came in, they didn't have the foresight to see ISIS and the Islamic State down here where we are now. They didn't have that. They didn't know of this crisis. They didn't know that. God did, but they did. They didn't know that in, 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 in the 200 years down the road plus that there would be a group of people that would be demanding, based on this right here, that they could come to this country and then they, they could worship and take over this country. And this country, and listen, saints, let's be honest now. This was a Christian nation. This country was, look, the Bible says this country was, was built on Christianity. So there are all the liberals out there that said it was not. It was a lie. This country was built on Christianity, not Islam, not anything. It was built on Christianity, and the, 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 the pioneers or the forefathers of this country never foresaw an Islamic state, uh, Islamic religion, that would rise to the occasion that it has and would try to take over the world. No, they didn't see that. Now, I can guarantee you if they, if they did, they would have put something in about it. But they didn't see that, saints. We're talking about prophecy update here tonight. Prophecy update. Congress shall make no law respecting and accepting of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And this is what the Islamic State and other religions and what have you, I mean, atheists and what have you are using. And then say, it's, it's a deep, it's deep, it's deep. Now, it's, remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and spiritual weakness in high places. Now, I tell you what, God foresaw all of this. God foresaw all of this. All right, let's go. Two horns like a lamb. Let's go to our Bibles. Let's go to our Bible. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to look at... Um, uh, Revelation 13. First of all, we're going to look at verses 1, 2, and 3. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Revelation. Verses 13, 1, 2, and 3. Are we there, saints? I hope you're there. I hope you're steady. This is prophecy update. Jesus, let me tell you something, saints. Jesus is very soon to come. I guarantee it. I'm looking at the Word of God. The Word of God tells me He's coming soon. The Bible says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, 
having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. I wish we had time to get into the, the, the depth of this, but we just, just want to, we got to skip across the surface here. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is Greece. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, which is Medo Persia. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion, which is Babylon. So this beast that comes up, he, 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 he has the educational philosophy of Greece. He has the, the uh, infallibility of a Medo Persia. But he, and he has the mouth of a lion. So the mouth of a lion is the religion, because that's what that's what was speaking. He has the mouth of, of a lion, which is Babylon, that false Babylonian system that was, that was formed on the plains of Sharon. That's what he has. And the Bible goes on to say, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and greatest order, which in this, in this case represents, first of all, pagan Rome, but represents Satan working through pagan Rome, because the dragon is the devil. So it is the dragon, Satan, working through pagan Rome to try to kill Jesus. All right? And the, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And the verse of the Bible goes on to say in verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, the Bible tells me that, that the papacy, this is the papacy, this is the Catholic Church. And look, and when you look, the series that we've, we've done called the mark of the beast gets in five discs. It gets into this in detail. By the way, you need to get the several sets and give out to your families for, for Christmas. This is a wonderful time to give that series out, the mark of the beast series. Okay, look what it says, Saint. verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world went after the beast. Now, Saint, listen. We know that the papacy received a deadly wound in 1798. Don't have time to get into details of that, but uh, they received a deadly wound in 1798. But the Bible says, this deadly wound would be healed and all the world would wonder after the beast. Now saints, right now, that deadly wound is almost completely healed. Now, the world is already wondering after the beast. I mean, big time. I mean, what, what just happened here in America lets you know that the world is wondering after the beast. But it's not just in America, it's all over the world. People that, not, not even Christians are now, they love Pope Francis. And so, saints, it's happening, it's happening right now. Let's, just, let's, let's, keep, let's go keep going. First, let's, let's go on down a little bit forward. I mean, uh, Revelation 13, 4, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Now, I'm going to skip on down. Well, I don't want to, but my time is getting away, so I got to skip down. Let's go down to verse 11. The Bible says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, now what, we got to, what we have to do here, we've got to look at this in segments. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Or he began to speak, or he would speak as a dragon. So first of all, this two-horned beast comes up with Christian principles. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? It first comes up with Christian principles because it comes up with two horns like a lamb. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This beast comes up with Christian principles. Brothers and sisters, America came up with Christian principle. America came up as a Christian nation. Are you hearing me, saying? In spite of whatever, whoever says. All of our schools, our first schools here were Christian or in a lot of our schools were actually in churches. It is not a doubt that this country came up with Christian, and that's what the pioneers meant. I have to listen. This is what they meant. They, 
the, 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 all of the Constitution, all this was based on Christianity. It's, it's, it's in, it's, you go up, to, up into Washington, it's, it's Christianity all up there. Now, that's sure there was a few deeds there, but look, Christianity was the, was the foundation of this nation. It was the foundation thing. Now, they didn't force you. You could, you, you could be whatever church you wanted, go to whatever church you wanted, but Christianity was the foundation of this nation. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. So let's look at the lamb part first. All right. Two horns like a lamb. Now, let's, let's see how did this take place. Remember I told you those three dates early on? 1776, independence. We, de we declared our independence from England. 1776. You know there was a seven-year war. And after the seven-year war ended in 1783, took a few years, and they signed the Constitution in 1787. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? And then 1791 was the Bill of Rights, and Article Number 1 was dealing with Christianity. There will not be no, no state religion. You would be able to worship God as you wish. But they also looked at it in the light of being Christians. Now, they, you didn't have to be a Christian, but they, the, the whole Article 1 was based on Christianity. So 1776 is the independence, they declared the independence, 1787 is the Constitution, 1791 is the Bill of Rights. So these three is what made America the lamb-like beast. It is these three, and this, this final one is the one that made it. The Constitution, yes, the, 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 the independence, but then, which gave them the credence to have a constitution, which then gave them the credence to have the Bill of Rights. And that's what made America a lamb-like beast. Freedom. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, it, was, it is no question about it. This was a Christian nation. And this was the, this was the idea of the forefathers. But the Bible goes on to say that this nation would speak as a dragon. Sad to say, it would speak as a dragon. Now, to speak as a dragon, we have to see what does the dragon do? The dragon persecutes. The dragon was kicked out of heaven. He's there fighting. So the dragon, if, the, if America speaks as a dragon, it will persecute. All right? And so let's put the dragon on, on the mouth because he has to speak as a dragon. So look at it now. Get the point. I want you to get the point, brothers and sisters. We're still dealing with the crisis of all that's going on in this world right now. We've got the refugee crisis. We've got the Russian plane and dropped out, been bombed out of the sky. We've got the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the recent bombing there in Paris. We've got another uh, Russian plane that's been shot down. You think all this are linked together. You watch and see now. Let's see. So here America speaks as a dragon. Let's go to our Bible now. It's my time is getting away from me. I might have to make a part two to this. Let's go to our Bible now. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7. Let's look at this thing. We are studying. Jesus is soon to come, saying. The Bible says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. So here we see as a dragon, he is a persecuting power, a persecuting, pushing. The Bible goes on to say, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, Genesis, called the devil, Matthew, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, verse 17. Verse 17. So he knew that he had but a short time. He's cast into the earth in, in 31 AD. Verse 17 says, And the dragon was wrought, angry, mad, upset. And the dragon was wrought with the woman, the church, the, 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 the original church that came from Pentecost forward, 
And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's the last part of the original. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is, I don't have time to go into the details of that, but the remnant which came on the scene in 1844 as Jesus left the holy and went into the most holy, this is the last part of the plan of salvation, the most holy place experience, where sin is put away. This is what this church was raised up to do. We're going to see that in just a second. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. What, what does this remnant do? They keep the commandments of God, all ten of them, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the gift of prophecy among them. Ellen G. White. And don't have time to go and prove all of that right now. So, Two, two things. They keep the commandments of God and have the gift of prophecy among them. Listen, let's, let's add some to that. Let's add some to that. Let's go over to Zechariah. We go to Zechariah. What we call over in the, what we call the the minor prophets. We're going to chapter 12. Zechariah. Zechariah, are you, are you with me? Sir? We want to look at a text here. 13, I said 12. Didn't I? The Bible talks and says that when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, it says that by a prophet, God led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And brothers and sisters, when we came on the scene as a people, God used a prophet to bring us out. Moses was that prophet of that day. Ellen G. White was a prophet of this day. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So by a prophet, God, he, he, he brought him out. Ellen G. White was a prophet. No if and and buts about it. Now let's look at verses, uh, 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 back in Revelation 13, verse 11, the Bible says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. And what did he do? He spake as a dragon. Now, for America to speak as a dragon, she would have to do what Revelation 12, 17 says uh, that the, the dragon would do. That means America would have to persecute and prosecute those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that means when America speaks as a dragon, it will become a persecuting power. But who will it persecute? It will keep, persecute those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In other words, who, those who believe in the spirit of prophecy, who believe in the four great controversies, who believe the testimonies, who believe the Zion of Ages, who believe the, I mean, the, whole, the whole writings. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So... When America speaks as a dragon, she will persecute those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Because to speak as a dragon means she will speak as Satan. And Jack, Satan is a persecuting Bible, and he wants to persecute those who keep the commandments. In other words, the remnant church. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So this, this beast will speak as a dragon. Now, what am I saying here? Let's, 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 let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. As he speaks of the dragon, let's go a little bit further. What does verse 12 say? My, my time is getting away, but I'm trying to rush. We had prophecy update. And welcome to prophecy update. This is real, saints. We are so close to the end of time. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The Bible says, as he speaks of the dragon, it says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose daily one was here. So America will cause the whole world to worship the first beast whose daily one was here. Now, who is this the first beast? The first beast is the papacy. That is the Catholic Church, who is headed now by Pope Francis. And I believe he is the last pope. I could be wrong, but I believe he is the last one. I don't believe there's another pope coming after Pope Francis. So the Bible says, talking about America, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth 
and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, we know that the earth first represents America. But it, in this case, it represents the whole world. That means ISIS. That means ISIS is going to worship the first beast. Watch it now. And he doeth great wonders so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by his sword and did live. That's verses 14, Revelation 13, verses 14. Look what else it says. Then. Verse 15 says, and America, now still talking about America, this, this two-horned beast, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as men would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now that image of the beast, you go to Great Controversy 445. She says, when the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as they hold in common, what do they hold in common? Sunday sacredness, natural immortality of the soul. That natural immortality of the soul, spiritualism, is the super glue that's going to bring all this, going to hold everybody together. It's the super glue. It's going to hold 196 nations together. That's what, the, that's what the Sunday sacredness and spiritual, spiritualism is a key thing. Spiritualism, natural immortality of the soul, is the super glue that will hold 196 nations together. Are you with me, Saint? So when the leading churches of the United States uniting upon such points of faith as they hold in common shall influence the government to enforce her dogmas and sustain her institutions, then shall Protestant America have formed an image to the Roman hierarchy and civil penalties will inevitably follow. So this is a great controversy 445 when you're looking at the image of the beast. So the Bible says, and he deceived them that dwell on the earth. Uh, by means of those miracles which he had, to, well, verse 15, let's go down to verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that his men would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, in order to give life to the image of the beast, the image of the beast must already be formed because uh, God first formed man in his own image. But man can do nothing until God breathed into him the breath of life. And so, before God could breathe life into Adam, he first had to be formed. So before America can breathe life into the image, the image must first be formed. And saints, the image is already formed. It, it's, it's, it's coming. Listen, this pope, this pope has done more to bring all the Protestant nations and the churches together than any other pope. All of them. And saints that they are, the only thing is left now is the opportunity. I mean, not the opportunity, the, 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 the event. I mean, that, and that's already happening right now. Even as we speak, that event is happening that will bind them all together. Look, look let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm, my time is getting away. Look here. So America will give life to the image of the beast. Now, let's, let's, let's hold on right here. Let's go, let's go back to Matthew 24. This is Prophecy Update, Saints. And I'm rushing. In Matthew 24, just briefly, just briefly, Matthew 24, the Bible says, as Jesus is leaving the temple precincts for the last time, and the disciples come to him and say, listen, don't you see this beautiful building that you're leaving, this beautiful temple? And Jesus said, there will not be one stone left upon another. They will not be thrown down. And the disciples considered what he said, and they said, well, when Jesus speaks, it's going to happen. This is the prophet. So if this is if this the case, they asked him the question, tell us, when should these things be? In other words, when will it be that there will not be one stone left upon another? You've got to understand something, brothers and sisters, that this temple set 400 feet in the air, had white marble stones leading up to every side of it. And this was, a, this, in other words, for Jesus said there will not be one stone left upon another was an awesome prediction. So the disciples reasoned that if this temple was going to be destroyed, it had to be the end of the world. So they asked him the question, tell us when shall these things be? 
what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they said this world can't exist without this temple. So if this temple is going to be destroyed, it has to be the end of the world. So tell us, when will the temple be destroyed? What should be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus began to delineate out what's, what was going to take place. And he gives a, a, a litany of things that's going to take place. And he gets down to verse 8 and he says, after he talks about the nation that shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, then he says, all these are the beginning of sorrow. In other words, the nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. These are just the beginning of sorrow. And so, verse 9 says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That means you're going to be hated of all nations. Everybody's going to hate you. Russia's going to hate you. China's going to hate you. ISIS is going to hate you. England is going to hate you. France is going to hate you. All 196 countries in this world is going to hate you. So what's going to happen that's make the whole world hate you for my name's sake? In other words, for standing for Jesus. And see, saints, that means somebody have to stand for Jesus. And God has raised up this church to stand for Jesus. Now look what it says, brothers and sisters. So in a full study, you will see that the Sunday law takes place between verses 8 and verses 9. That's what happens. The event takes place between verses 8 and 9 is the national Sunday law. And as a result of the national Sunday law, you're going to be hated of all nations. And you'll see why in a minute. So when you get back over to Revelation 13, and the Bible says... Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So what is it that the image of the beast is going to do? The image of the beast is going to pass a national Sunday law, which takes place between Matthew 24, verses 8 and 9. Between verses 8 and 9, the Sunday law is passed. And that's, the, that's the work of the image of the beast. And, the, and, and if you don't do what the, image, what the image of the beast says, then you're going to be killed. That's a long story. It just don't happen just like that. But, you know, I, I have a series called Get Ready, Get Ready, Get Ready, which I go through all the details. But let's just, I'm, we, we deal with ISIS today. Verse 16 says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, that's what this beast does as he speaks as a dragon. This beast will become a persecuting power to enforce the image of the beast. But the prophet tells us something else in Testimonies, volume 6, page 18. She says, as America passes a Sunday law, every nation on the face of the earth will follow suit. Now, I wish I had time to get into why, but, but this, we'll talk a little bit about it. We'll talk a little bit about it. Let's go. Now, also, I want you to bring out a point. When America speaks as a dragon, she becomes, the, she becomes a part of the head system, you know? That's... America becomes number seven because in Revelation it says, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet coming. When John sees this, he was taken into the spirit, into the wilderness. And when he sees this, when, when God shows him this, it, he shows him this after 1798. So when John sees the vision of Revelation 17, he says, five are fallen. Babylon has fallen. Medo Persia has fallen. Greece has fallen. Pagan Rome has fallen. Paper Rome has fallen. And so it is after 1798, and number six is on the scene. So he says, five are fallen, one is, which will be number six, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he shall continue a short space. So America is number seven when she speaks as a dragon. And so when she speaks as a dragon, that's the other that has not yet come. But when he cometh, he's going to continue just a short space. In other words, when America speaks as a dragon, saints, it ain't but a little while left before Jesus comes. And saints, we are on the verge, this country speaking as a dragon. She's already disconnecting herself. She's ready to speak as a dragon. Watch it. So, all right, now, let's go back here. Here's our Bill of Rights. Here's, Congress shall make no law respecting and establishing of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. All right? Congress shall make no law respecting and establishing of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. What does the prophet say? What did, what did the Bible just say? When Protestantism shall stretch her hands across the gulf 
to grasp the hands of the Roman power when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism. That's the glue. That's the super glue. This super glue is going to, going to bind 196 nations together, including ISIS. When under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution. What is this threefold union? That threefold union is Protestantism, the Roman power, and spiritualism. That's the threefold union. When under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution. 1787, every principle of his constitution, all of the Bill of Rights, as a Protestant and Republican government and shall make provision for the promulgation of papal falsehoods and delusions. Then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous workings of Satan and that the end is near. In other words, brothers and sisters, when America passes this Sunday law, then Satan shows up as Jesus. And he shows up as Jesus. And I can't, can't have time to go into details, but one of the places he's going to show up is in Jerusalem. And he's going to walk through that golden gate, which the Jews are still waiting on G Jesus to come the first time. And when he walks through that golden gate, they will accept him as the Christ. And since all the Protestant uh, uh, Christians believe that Jerusalem is still God's chosen people, they will accept him as the Christ. And then he brings Matria with him. He brings Buddha with him. She says, heathen deeds will, will show up. He brings Buddha with him, and all the Chinese will accept him. He brings Mohammed with him, and all Islam will accept him, including ISIS. And when, Isla when Mohammed shows up and says, look, we're all together in heaven, and we, the, the day of worship is on Sunday, et cetera, et cetera, Islam will put down their guns and follow this heathen, this, one of these fallen angels. Every heathen deed, every... It, uh, the 196 nations, every one have some kind of deity that they were, even the Russians, everybody will accept this false Christ. Are you with me, saints? And when everybody accepts this false Christ, he will say that Sunday must be strictly enforced and that the only way to stop the chaos that's going on is that it must be strictly enforced. And the whole world will bow down, but there'll be a little group of Seventh-day Adventists, they will not bow down. Now, most of these Adventists, this 18 million Adventists that we have in the church today will be gone. They will give up at the Sunday law, but that's going to be a nucleus. That will be the church triumphant. They will receive the seal of God. They will be empowered with the latter rain. They will give a loud cry, and they will take the gospel to the entire world, uncut, uncensored, unadulterated. And then Jesus is going to stand up in the most holy place and says, He that is just, let him be just still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work should be. Let's go. She goes on. As we approach the last crisis, it is a vital moment that harmony and unity exists among the Lord's instrumentalities. Brothers and sisters, we need harmony. Right now, there's so many messages being given among us this seven day, especially among present truth. I believe this. I believe this. Saints, we have to believe what the Word of God says. So don't have time to get into all of this. But, Saints, every wind of darkness is blowing among us as, as, as a way to be saved. The world is filled with storm and war and reverence. Yet, listen to this, Saints. Listen to this. Yet, on the one hand, the papal power, the people will unite to oppose God in the person of his witness. Did you get that, saints? Listen. The world is filled with storm and war and virgin. That's where we are right now as we speak. The world is filled with storm and war and vagrancies everywhere. Everywhere. There's total unrest in the entire world. In the entire world, there's, to there's no peace anywhere. Saints, you can go down on the beach, and I, you know, we don't have no business down there, but we can go down on the beach, and uh, a terrorist came up on the beach and, and just killed up, I don't know how many people. There's no safety anywhere except in Jesus. Look at what it says. The world is filled with storm and war and variant, yet on the one head, the papal power, the people will unite to oppose God in the person of his witness. This union is 
cemented by their great apostate, talking about Satan. Continue. Laws enforcing the observance of Sunday as the Sabbath will bring about a national apostasy from the principles of republicanism upon which the government has been founded. The religion of the papacy will be accepted by the rulers, and the law of God will be made void. This is prophecy of day saints. This is what this really means. When America speaks of the dragon, this is what she's going to do. She's going to pass a national sin law. Now, son, even right now, ISIS is causing a problem. But you know what ISIS is doing? ISIS is calling the world already to unite. Because they seem like we've got to fight this. And they're, they're breaking down their restrictions and their barriers. And, and they're already coming together. I knew when I saw what took place in Paris, I said, look, okay, something has to happen. I was in Cleveland doing a meeting at the time this was taking place. And I told the people at the meeting, I said, listen, I'm going to talk on this tomorrow. I recognized immediately, by the grace of God, that the Paris bombing, even we had all kind of bombing by these terrorists, I recognized that this particular bombing was going to bring all the nations together. So we see a coherence now. The nations are beginning to come together. So we got to fight this. We got to fight this. We got to band together and we got to fight this. But that's still chaos, total chaos. And so, saints, as we move forward now, see, I'm going to tell you some saints. Don't you, don't you believe for a moment that America is not the last standing power. America is going to be the one. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? America and the Pope, saints, not ISIS. Look here. The people of the United States have been a favorite people, but when they restrict religious liberty, surrender Protestantism, and give countenance to popery, the measure of their guilt will be full and national apostasy will be registered in the books of heaven. Saints, I hope you're listening. I hope you're taking this in. And we're so close to this happening. The Beast of Revelation 13 chapter is none other than the mammoth institution and the false worship system of the papacy. A prayerful study of the Bible would show Protestants the real character of the papacy and would cause them to abhor and to shun it. But many are so wise in their own conceit that they feel no need of humbly seeking God that they may be led into the truth. Look what it says. This is, listen, saints, this is the enemy. This is the enemy here working, working through Satan. The vacuum's mark of authority. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The Catholic record, London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923. Brothers and sisters, this thing is so real. This is the enemy. Satan is the enemy, but he's working through this power. Now, he's, he's, he's working all over the world, doing all kinds of things. He's working through ISIS, but he's working through ISIS for a purpose. He's causing world chaos. This is what the, what the, what the prophet said would take place. She says this chaos is going to take place worldwide. Education, I believe, page 228. We look at this grandfatherly smile that this man has. This man is the beast. By a variety of images, the Lord Jesus represented to John the wicked character and seductive influence of those who have been distinguished for their persecution of God's people. Look at this seductive influence. All need wisdom carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of this earth history. Not ISIS, brothers and sisters, but the Catholic Church figures is the one that figures so largely in the winding up of, of this earth's history. Are you hearing me, saying? What ISIS is doing is just driving people to this, to him. That's what he said. This man has already said, this is World War III that's approaching. He said, we've got to stop it. So all ISIS has done worldwide is driving, is driving everybody to this man, to the Catholic Church. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Let's go. She says, in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin who has made the son of the Lord distinct about. Brothers and sisters, we have been called to expose this man. And saints, I'm, I have to say this. The Great Hope, that book, will not expose him. We need a full version of the Great Controversy. 
made the Sunday law distinct to power, who has thought to change times and laws and to oppress the people of God who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath creation as holy unto the Lord. So brothers and sisters, the message that God has given the remnant church, which was what Satan hates, will expose this man. In other words, saints, the three angels' message, that we preach the three angels' message, uncut, unadulterated, uncensored, it will expose this man. Right now, Satan is working both ends against the sinner. He is using ISIS, this Islamic faith, as a false religion, a totally false religion. None, no, has, listen, listen, brothers and sisters, totally false. But he's using it now, got 1.6 billion of them, and they are, they are driving the world to the Pope. Are you hearing me saying? That's what's really going on behind the scenes. Evil seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is prophecy update. This is what it really means, saints. Now listen, the threat of ISIS is real. It's got people fearful, but it is simply driving people to here. Look at this Pope. Look where he's speaking. Look where he is. The, the, the vice president and the president should be, look, he's in the place of the president. Here's the speaker of the house, here's the vice president, and here's the pope. But the president's supposed to be standing here. But he's there. Unprecedented. Unbelievable. But it's fulfillment of prophecy. Look what she says. Look what she says. God's word has given warning of the impending danger. Let this be unheeded and the Protestant world will learn what the purposes of Rome really are only when it is too late to escape the snare. She is silently growing into power. She's back. Her doctrines are exerting their influence in legislative halls, in the churches, and in the hearts of men. We are here. She is piling up her lofty and massive structures in the secret recesses of which her former persecution will be repeated. Are you listening, saints? Steadily and unsuspectingly, she is strengthening her forces to further her own ends when the time shall come for her to strike all that she desires is bandaged ground. And this is already being given her. Yes, Sister White, it is being given to her right now as we speak. We shall soon see and shall feel what the purpose of the Roman element is. Whoever shall believe and obey the word of God will thereby incur reproach and persecution. Saints, we are here. Get ready. Here is the Pope speaking to 196 countries at the, at the, uh, uh, look at him. 196 countries, the Pope is spilling out his agenda. And the people are listening. The Pope told the United Nations General Assembly that it is critical that the international community act now to solve problems ranging from climate change to poverty and inequality of opportunity. Sound really wonderful, doesn't it, Saints? Really, really wonderful. September 25th, 2015. We're going back. Now, my time is about gone. I, I have some more here to share with you, but I think I'm going to just wait. I, I want to talk to you about the fact that in light of all of this, seven day events are being brought to the forefront. Let me just put this much up here. Let me, she says this. Let me pass this. Ben Carson put spot, spotlight on seven day events. This is from the, the, the uh, AP. The seven day Adventist church is having a moment. As Ben Carson seeks the Republican nomination, for president, he also is drawing notice to the church that has counted him as a member since he was a child. Ben Carson, a Seventh-day Adventist, has also taken his message to other churches, among them the Maple Street Missionary Baptist Church in Des Moines in August. Now, I, I'm just, I, my time is up. I just want to put one thing here, what the prophet says. I want to put one thing here. She says, I want, I want this, I'm going to put this one up. She says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Every position of truth taken by our people will bear the criticism of the greatest minds. 
the highest of the world's great men will be brought in contact, oh, you hearing these things, with truth, and therefore every position we take should be critically examined and tested by the scriptures. Now we seem to be unnoticed, but this will not always be. Movements are at work to bring us to the front, and if our theories of truth can be picked to pieces by historians or the world's greatest men, it will be done. So just as movements that work that's going to bring us to the forefront. It is right now happening as a result of Ben Carson. We must individually know for ourselves what is truth and be prepared to give a reason of the hope that we have with meekness and fear. Now, I'm going to fast forward. Here's Ben Carson. They did an interview with Ben Carson. We're coming to a close. They asked him about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and his beliefs and what have you. Now, I'm just giving you a little excerpt. There's a whole list of stuff. I'm just giving you a little excerpt here. This is what he said. In a wide-ranging interview about his faith on Wednesday, October 28, 2015, now remember she says we were going to be brought to the forefront. History told, I tell you before it comes to pass, and when it comes to pass, you might believe. Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson expressed pride in his little-known Seventh-day Adventist church, but also sought some distance from it. In other words, he expressed pride, but at the same time, he sought to distance himself from it. In other words, he sought to distance himself from the doctrines. Okay. Framing his beliefs in the broadest Christian terms as his surging campaign prompts scrutiny of his religion. In other words, because his campaign began to surge, it prompted scrutiny of his religious beliefs. So what did Brother Carson do? Now, he's a nice man. I'm not beating up on him. He's a nice man. I'm sure he is. Soft-spoken and everything. But watch what he says now. He says, traces of the anti-Catholic prejudice White expressed in her writings can still be found in Adventism. Carson rejects that bias. Did you hear that? He says, look what he said. Traces of the anti-Catholic prejudice White expressed in her writings can still be found in Adventism. But Carson rejects that bias. That's, he's distanced himself from the doctrine. He says, I love Catholics. My best friend is Catholic. I have several honorary degrees from Catholic universities, he said. Carson also addressed White's end-of-the-world prophecy about Jesus' return. She predicted that the government, with the help of Christians who celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday, will persecute Seventh-day Adventists for their Sarah to worship. Now, this is what, listen, saints, are you hearing this? You, saw, you just saw what we went through here in our study? Prophecy update, you just saw it? Look what the, the man is at the, t at the, the whole, the, the world has the eyes focused on him, especially America. You see what he's saying? I think there's a wide variety of interpretations of that. He said there's a wide variety of interpretations of that. There's a lot of persecution of Christians going on already in other parts of the world. This is his, listen, this is his explanation. And some people assume that that's going to happen every place. I'm not sure that's an appropriate assumption, he said. If you look at what's going on today with persecution of Christians, particularly in the Middle East, I believe that's really more what's being talked about. In other words, brothers and sisters, what... Brother Ben Carson said is that Revelation 13 is talking about what ISIS is doing right now. That's what he's saying. That's what Brother Carson is saying, saints. Do you see that we need to get serious? We're going to be brought to the test, saints. I say, brothers and sisters, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Now, I want to, as we close, I want to tell you that... Um, January 1, January 2, which is a Friday and a Sabbath, we're going to have a prophecy update for the whole year. Prophecy in review starting January, starting January 1, 2015, all the way down to January 31st. We're going to do a prophecy update uh, review of all the things that have happened prophetically. Let us know where we are right now. Saints, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. This is not a plaything. This is not a plaything. Saints, we've got to prepare people. You and I have got to be prepared to stand true to God when they investigate his judgment. 
passes from the dead to the living, and that, that judgment will pass from the dead to the living at the passing of the Sunday law. We need to get ready. This is not a plaything. Satan is intended to take this church out. She says this church will appear as about to fall. She says it will not. It will remain while the sinners in Zion are shaken out. But you're going to find out that the majority that have their name on the books call themselves Seventh-day Adventists will not stand. We're going to have a very few left. But that very few will be to come to church triumph. And I want to be a part of that. What about you? So we're going to have, and we're, we're, it's, it's going to be live. And uh, we're asking you to come. We're asking you to come here to our facility, uh, that, that, that Sabbath, at least that Sabbath. Uh, and uh, we will uh, meet here uh, Sabbath evening. We'll go to church, our regular church in Fayetteville. But we'll have a meal here about probably about 1 o'clock on Sabbath, and then we will finish out the, the weekend. We'll prophecy update will actually start Friday night, and it'll continue on Sabbath evening after, after the 11 o'clock service at our regular church that we attend. And uh, it'll go on to probably sometime into the evening, late evening. So if you are in the vicinity and uh, want to come, want to come to church with us on that Sabbath, please be, do so. And then we'll come back here, have lunch, uh, and then we'll continue with the prophecy uh, uh, in review. And then another big thing that we're going to do by the grace of God, we're going to have a medical missionary training right here, week, one week long. And that's coming up. We'll give you, as we get to more of the information worked out, we'll give you that date as well. Medical Missionary Saints Health is going to be a major part that's going to help us to stand when the investigative judgment passes from the dead to the living. Brothers and sisters, this is real. This is real. This is real. This is real. Our purpose here at Apocalypse Ministries is to do all that we can, to share all that we can, to give as much information as we can Saints, to prepare a people to stand true, to open our eyes, and to not be carried away with every wind and doctrine that's blowing among us as a people. Every wind and doctrine that's blowing right now. People are saying, come over here. This is the truth. Saints, there's only one truth. And when we all understand that truth, we're all going to be on one accord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Please be with us. Help us. Save us. Let us not get swayed by the deceptions of the enemy. In Jesus' name.